Being a YouTuber is probably one of the most greatest jobs in the world, no questions asked. But with starting this YouTube journey and becoming a content creator, there are some things I've learned along the way that I wish I knew before I started. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of those things, the things that I've learned over the last couple of years of being a YouTuber across multiple channels, including this one and tons of videos. And hopefully they'll help some of you guys out there, whether you're starting a brand new channel or if you've been doing this for a while. Let's do it. to the channel, hope you're doing fine and dandy. I have been a YouTuber on and off since about 2012. I started taking it really seriously in around 2019, 2018. And since then, I have learned a lot about what it takes to be a YouTuber. So I decided I wanted to share those things with you guys to break down those barriers and hopefully help some of you guys out if you are facing the same things as well. And along with that, I sat down with Harris and I picked his brains over the kinds of things that he's learned over his YouTube career to see if any of them would help you guys as well. So that's coming up in this video but before we dive into that i want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video mercury by stream elements mercury is the free community management and engagement tool for youtubers with features like dynamic video descriptions the shout out studio and more functionality that every youtuber will appreciate for example with dynamic descriptions you can turn those boring static descriptions into live content you can add things like polls to ask questions and get feedback from your audience as well as thank your latest subscribers and members right there in the description and and with the Shoutout Studio, you can create a custom video asset that thanks your subscribers, your members, as well as your Patreon supporters all in one go. And one brand new feature that I'm very excited about, and that is dynamic video thumbnails. And yes, they are as cool as they sound. Dynamic thumbnails allow for a whole new level of interactivity and engagement with your audience. You can set up thumbnails with metrics like subscriber count or view count that update live on the thumbnail itself. You know, just like the one we have for this video. They're simple to add and customize and they bring thumbnails to life in a way that was never possible before. So if you want to give it a go and try it out for yourself, all you need to do is go to mercury.streamelements.com, sign in with your YouTube account, and let Mercury take care of the rest. And as always, let me know what you guys think of Mercury down below in the comments, or if you want to be fancy, I would have to poll in the description of this video that you can answer, and let me know what you think of Mercury that way instead. Now, with all that said and done, let's get back to the video. So the first one on my list is probably a big one that I think affects a lot of YouTubers and it definitely affected me when I was first starting it because you're coming to this platform for the first time, kind of fresh me, you don't know what the hell you're doing and all that. You look to the people and you start comparing yourself to people that have been on the platform for years and you go, oh, I wish I was that person or I wish I was that person. And you start kind of overthinking your journey, I guess you could say, you start overthinking your the the process, and you want to get where you want to get to quickly. And we start comparing yourself to this yeah, person. Yeah, because this person. you never saw that person when they were struggling like you. You exactly. only learned about them once they were large. Exactly. Yeah. And so you think that you're doing something wrong. And that's a really big thing that I struggled with for a very long time when I first started. I was like, Why, what am I doing wrong, or what am I not thinking about properly? Everyone should find their own f kind of inspiration, but it's really important to find what makes you you. Which is why, like, find something that inspires you. You, gives you that creative buzz that goes, I don't make something like that, but make it better. But don't try to be like that person. Find what makes you, you, what makes you click. Mm -hmm. Because that is the ultimate goal is to figure yes. out what, why would people want to watch your videos versus anybody else's? Well, I'm going to take that and I'm going to make my first one the opposite. I would say, because the end goal is, you're absolutely right. The goal is to find your own self. But the problem is it takes a lot of videos until you figure out what that is especially when you've never done it before or or if you're someone like me who is just like naturally not good in front of the camera like i've been making videos for eight years and i've figured things out along the way but i've tried a bajillion different things and i think we get so worried about like ah, i don't want to be a rip off of this person now ah, this person already did that that we're so afraid to try things i think the best way you can learn to be yourself is by finding the people you respect and you, that inspire you putting your own spin on it. and not even maybe not even putting your own spin on it but just literally doing stuff like them to see maybe i'm good at this maybe i like this or maybe maybe i like portions of this but not other portions and i'm going to try this guy's stuff i'm going to take this portion of this guy's stuff this portion of this guy's stuff but even more than just stealing content i think it is perfectly okay to steal other people's personalities. As far as I'm aware, um, and as far as a counselor has, a couple counselors have said, I, I have high functioning Asperger's. And 
growing up, I had a very, like almost no personality. I felt like I was a blank slate and it didn't, I didn't start developing that until like my mid twenties, early twenties, mid twenties, when I started finding people I liked and started emulating them and started taking pieces of their personality. And I do that still today on YouTube and I don't know exactly how I want to present something in front of the camera. I ask myself, how would Casey Neistat do it? How would Peter McKinnon do it? And I become them in front of the camera for a little bit. And if you do that a hundred times, you start to develop your own camera persona. And there's nothing wrong with trying to steal other people's content, trying to steal other people's personality. It helps you develop your own. It's the old yoink and twist. That's the old yoink, yoink and twist, twist yeah. Really Give yourself the flexibility to make mistakes as well. Like the, the big thing is when you're starting out, a lot of people are trying to make the perfect video. Put effort into it, but I'd say take your first 50 videos and make them explorative videos. Which kind of leads into my next one, actually. Mm. That's a very natural yeah, segue, this guys. is working really well. This is not, you know, it's almost this like is you actually, planned it. planned this. <laughs> and that is, don't worry about your niche yet. I always find so many people, especially I know this a lot when I was starting out, like, what do I make videos on? I've got to find what I, make, what I make videos on. I want to find my little kind of corner of the internet that I can be really good at. And it falls into that thing where I can't start making videos until I know what I'm doing. And that is, in my head, just completely wrong. That is, that is the false thing. I think when you're first starting out, if you don't have a niche, just make videos about things you're passionate about or things you're good at. Like if you are, you like rock climbing, make videos on rock climbing. If you like cooking, make videos on cooking or you know gaming or whatever and over time your niche will emerge mm -hmm. you what you are good at and what you can explain well and what you can talk about well will slowly become you'll float to the surface you go that's my thing yeah you don't figure out what your niche is until you find 20 niches that aren't your niche if you do know what your niche is i would highly suggest don't make it such a narrow niche that you're boxed in find ways you can branch off from rock climbing could you do general fitness stuff could you do camping stuff try and find things that have a broader tree associated with them and then you won't be able to box yourself in. You'll be quite versatile in what you can do. This one comes from, I think, so many people being obsessed with the meta. People are always trying to do what's super popular right now. And I think a lot of people have interests that aren't being utilized on the internet or people aren't doing, and they assume if the internet's not doing it, it's not gonna work for me. But that's how trendsetters are born. Like a lot of people are like, they wanna play Warzone and they think they, in order to get big, they have to be the best at Warzone. Why don't you find something that not a lot of people are doing, but actually you think my, people might be interested and you find ways to make it interesting and you do your own thing. That's how people have lasting careers. My next one is one that kind of, I've said a lot on this channel, I said a lot in my videos, and it's something that I very much believe in, and that is knowing that done is better than perfect. And getting your video out there into the world, getting your video completed, it doesn't matter if it's good, bad, indifferent, or whatever, just get it out there. You know, your first, no no one's going to watch your first 10 videos. No one's going to watch your first 50 videos. Exactly. No one's going to watch your first 100 <laughs> videos. It's not going to happen. You know? Be okay with it. Like, there's thousands of YouTubers out there with thousands of videos that were shot on the old, the, the laptop webcams. I mean, like, MKBHD is a good example where his first, one of his first videos was a laptop video reviewing a phone. That's how he started. And now look at him. Your first video might feel like it's not perfect for you, but it's probably 10 times better than somebody else's first video. And so what that says to me is that quality is a very subjective viewpoint. So that when you're starting out your YouTube channel, don't focus on making quality videos, focus on getting videos done to start being consistent. And then as you make more videos, your quality will naturally go up because you become faster at making videos. You know what to say in the front of the camera. You become more confident, your editing gets better. So. That's one thing that I would say is just, you know, focus on getting them out and the quality will come. Yeah, you just gotta find the sweet zone of like, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It can be 90, it can be 80% perfect, but it can't be 10% perfect. That's just cutting corners and, and you didn't try. Your first 50 videos are gonna, aren't gonna be about building an audience. They're gonna be about learning the craft. And so put a lot of effort into it, but if it's still not where you want it to be, that's okay. Probably the most common question people ask me is like, what should I make videos about? I'm like, I don't freaking know. Like, <laughs> what, what do you want to make videos about? Yep. But what you need to do is you need to analyze three things. You need to analyze what you enjoy. You need to analyze what you're good at. And those two generally have a lot of overlap and what people want to watch. Those three circles, find something that fits in that little triangle, that little rounded triangle in the middle of those. That's the kind of content you'd be making. You, that's the kind of content you should be making. That is your niche essentially. Yes. I would even take it one step further. That is, that is your niche. And that'll take a long time. This isn't something you can figure out in the next 15 minutes. Like that'll take a lot of videos to figure out. But then take that little rectangle. It's a triangle. It's not a rectangle. <laughs>
take that little triangle and like split that in half because within that niche, there are going to be some things that people are already doing. Lots of people are already doing. And then there are going to be things that very few people are doing and try to pinpoint those things because there's probably like, if you really enjoy playing Warzone and you're good at it, that's great. There's a lot of people that want to watch Warzone, but there's already 10 million people streaming Warzone. And are you better than the people who already have 10,000, 20,000 viewers? Are you? There's a lot of competition there, but maybe you're also really good at this other thing that only 20 other people are doing and has a lot of potential to blow up. Try and both do things, expand, but uh, that that's my advice when looking for your niche. Make sure you're always having that Venn diagram in mind. And one thing, it's kind of more of a practical thing, and it's something that I still struggle with, and it'll probably will always struggle with building an ecosystem for your content. Find ways you can do 80% of your work for 20% of your efforts. Find what you can do that's gonna make things easier for you in the long run, like batch filming videos, you know, things that you can stream together. If you're doing a live stream, what can you do during that live stream that can go out to other platforms? Can you film 10 TikToks? Can you film a full length YouTube video, build an ecosystem where you can do 80% of what you want to release with 20% of the time, 20% of the effort and just maximize those results. When people ask for business advice, I've literally like you watch business advice videos. It's crazy how I've never heard this, but it is the biggest piece of advice, probably because it's not sexy. Nobody wants to hear this, but those are the ones that work. If you want to succeed, like if you want to be able to try new things, you want to invest in your in your business or whatever, you want to start making real money doing this. The way you do that is by not spending money, like living not within your means, but living as far below your means as you can. And then when you start making money, don't start increasing your spending. There's there's that lifestyle creep. Yeah. Where like, you know, you find a live streamer who's maybe, you know, early on making a hundred dollars a month, barely hitting that Twitch payout, and spends it on a webcam, spends it on this thing, whatever. And then they have a blow up. They go up to a thousand dollars a month. Every month they buy a thousand dollars worth of equipment or they hire an editor or whatever it is that they need to do. They spend as they as the income increases, their spending increases. When I had stream beats just blow up. There was a point where the YouTube channel and stream beats together were making like $140,000 a month. While we were making $140,000 a month, we were living in a place where we paid $1,600 a month. My monthly expense, I want to, I want to make sure people understand what I'm saying here. My monthly expenses were paid off before I woke up on the first of the month for an entire year. And because we didn't move to a larger apartment, because we didn't do anything crazy, we were able to invest stupid amounts of money back into stream meets and back into the channel and into new businesses. Living that far within our means for so long is what allowed us to make Sent by HQ. The success of your content is much more contingent on your efforts and your talents that you develop and the equipment that you have. And I think the final point as well, for me at least, is, and I'm still I'm still dealing with this, and when I was starting with YouTube, I, th I actually think, I think when I was starting YouTube, it was actually less of a problem than it is now, and is to not worry about the numbers. And I know that so many YouTubers worry about the numbers of their channel, the views, subscribers, the revenue, all that kind of fluctuates so much that it makes it a very stressful and a very volatile career path. But I think the most important thing is when you are making YouTube videos, those numbers aren't going to affect the content itself. So don't worry about kind of how many views a video gets. You're going to go up and down. You're going to have like a, a two out of 10, then a nine out of 10. I went, I think what, a couple of my videos were like seven or eight out of 10 for like three in a row. I think there was a, a month, like a seven video stint. Yeah. Of 10 out of 10 videos, which sounds great, but it's the worst. Just, it kills you. You're wondering like, is my career over? Exactly. Have yeah. people lost interest in me? Yeah. And then, and then the next month we had, I think seven in a row that were either one or two out of 10. I had the same thing. Yeah. So it like, literally, back I literally had three videos back to back to back, quit one out of 10. It's, it's a hard balance because you can look at it and go, okay, what I did on this thumbnail doesn't work very well. I can, I need to try something different than that. And that's what you should take from it. Right. But instead our brains go to, it's over. My self worth is it's gone. People don't like me. My yeah. channel's gonna, you know, it's up in flames. But, but no, no, like, oh, my title and thumbnail didn't do very well. I need to try titling it something different. Yeah. That's, yeah, exactly. that's all you should take from it. Yeah. One thing that people forget: people are so desperate for viral videos that they make this mistake. They don't make themselves the subject of the content. Kenzie just called me upstairs a minute ago and she showed me, she put uh, Lennon in this bear onesie. Like she's literally stuck like this and it is the <laughs> most adorable thing. I'm like, this is viral content on TikTok. But if I'm not in it, nobody's gonna follow me because 
That's not me. And you have you have stuff like, you know, David after dentist, for example, was a hysterical moment, but it doesn't make the person appealing. It makes the moment appealing. Yeah. You have to make sure when you're making TikToks, when you're trying to make viral stuff, you don't jump so hard into a trend that the video is about the trend and it's not about you. You need to make sure you're the subject of the content. That's one of the most important things that people can forget in trying to get views is they forget to develop themselves as a character. And that is pretty much everything, guys. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content creation tips and tricks, I've made a custom playlist just for you. Go ahead, check it out over here. Go watch through all those videos. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Take care.